Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology, and my website is uh, paulbeckwith.net. Please uh, have a look at it. If you Google um, Arctic sea ice graphs, you actually come to um, this particular site. And there's loads of data here. There's blogs, uh, forum, uh, lots of uh, images, lots of data here on the Arctic sea ice, which is what I'll be discussing in this video. I'm, I'm going to look at the sort of my assessment as to whether we have a blue ocean event in the Arctic in the cards. A blue ocean event being say less than 1 million square kilometers of sea ice uh, at the end of the melt season. So what you see here is this is the Arctic sea ice volume in uh, 10 to the cubed or 1,000 cubic kilometers. And it's for each different month from 1979 to present day. Okay, the, the average, the, um, this was updated February 2016. So here you see the September sea ice trajectory over time, the spiral towards the center. So zero would be no sea ice. And you see that the, there's a decrease um, and we reached a minimum here in 2012 and there was another minimum in 2007. And I'll look at what's happening this year. Now you'll also notice that each, each month of the year is showing a decline of sea ice volume. So the ice is getting thinner, the extent is getting smaller, the area is getting smaller, everything is decreasing, and where is that going to take us to and how quickly? If we display this data in a different format here, so what we have is the Arctic ice volume fitted to an exponential curve, and again it's for each um, different month. So this is the average ice volume in a given month. So this would be the average in September here, the lowest curve. And then bracketing it would be um, August, which is the pinkish curve, and October, which is the purple curve. So what this seems to indicate, and then so on for each of the different months. So what this seems to indicate is when this curve reaches essentially zero in September, then the other curves follow down. The other curves follow down pretty pretty quickly. So you could imagine um, no sea ice, blue ocean event in September, and then within a few years, these other two curves, the months bracketing it, come down to zero. And then as time proceeds, the other curves drop to zero. And eventually, can we reach a state where there's no Arctic sea ice year round? And we'll have gone through a, um, an abrupt climate transition if that happens. Okay, so. What I'm gonna show now is, this is the yearly minimum Arctic ice volume over time. And this is fitted to a linear curve instead of an exponential curve. And this is what we have here. So we had a minimum in 2007, another minimum in 2012. And this is where we've been in the last couple of years. So we'll have a look at what's happening now. So again, if you just Google Arctic sea ice graphs, and come here, then you can see the, um, this data is updated as of today, yesterday. Okay, so it's very, it's constantly updated. And this is a sea ice concentration um, in various forms. We have the Arctic sea ice extent. This is the National Snow and Ice Data Center. Now, the problem with this particular data from the National Snow and Ice Data Center is that they had a sensor that was experiencing difficulties. So they suspended the time series. This happened on or about April 5th. And they're working to fix that problem. But we do have 
what happened is it went into, it seemed to ha go into these oscillations, similar to what we see here with the cryosphere today data. So I'm assuming that this is, uh, this data is from the same sensor as the snow and ice data center sensor, but I don't know that for sure. If it's not, then, you know, is it possible that the sensor, uh, because of the state of the ice, it's uh, messing up the sensor readings? Um, that remains to be determined. Probably not. See, this is the sort of thing that was going on with the data. Um, so presumably this is from the same, um, the same device. So we're going by the JAXA, the Japanese sea ice extent. So if I click on here, this shows you what the latest value is of the sea ice as of April 26, 2016. So this is the red curve that we're looking at here. Okay, um, so you can see that we're well below, we've got the 1980s average, the 90s average, the 2000s average, We've got the lowest year was the blue curve. Um, lowest year was the blue curve there. Okay, if I can get it. Okay, there we go. I'm not sure why I'm... Okay, so this is the blue curve. That was the lowest year um, in 2012. And then if we go to the green curve is the next lowest year in 2007. And then the third lowest year was was 2015 and here's where we are now so we're well below any previous year for this particular time of year we just crossed below 12.57 million square kilometers and if you compare to you know if you go out to a level here in 2015 when we were at 12.57 roughly it was um may 4th Okay, so we're, we're at least a week, uh, maybe a bit more, ahead of the previous lowest year, record year. And if we compare it to, you know, other, like uh, 2007, we're even further ahead. We're way ahead on the averages. So what's, gonna, what's happening is, you know, one of these years, depending on the conditions or so on, this is going to head to essentially zero, which is what we what I'm calling the blue ocean event. So if we go back, um, you know, if you want to see what's going on with the planet because of the rapidly warming Arctic, the um, we're getting we're seeing the jet stream. This is so this is Earth null school. If you Google Earth null school, and if you go to 250 millibars in the atmosphere. This is where the jet streams are. You're looking at winds. Then you can see the nature of the jet streams. So this is uh, Greenland up here. You can see that as the Arctic is warming, the waviness of the jet streams gets much more intense. There's, uh, it's fractured. There's, pieces, there's vortices breaking off of it. You know, it's basically a big mess. And it generally separates cold, dry air at, in the Arctic from lower latitude air, which is warmer and more humid. If we want to look at what's happening sort of day to day or get a week forecast, you can click on or Google Climate Reanalyzer, and then you can see what's going on um, today. Okay, so this is a temperature anomaly. And if you click on here, it moves you around and you can see the, the, the temperature anomaly, which is the temperature today relative to the average. You can get it on a global map here and you can see that the Arctic is uh, 4.15 degrees Celsius warmer than, than normal. This is become, becoming an ongoing feature, um, which I'll show here. So we're going back to Arctic sea ice graphs. If we go down, okay, so we looked at the extent dropping. The extent is any area where there's 15% or more ice. And uh, you can go down and have a look at these different curves, and I'll just point out a couple different things. First of all, this is the daily mean temperature in the Arctic, and this goes from, this is data from 58 to 2016. Now, the ERA 40 curve, if you go down, 
Um, it's uh, the mean temperatures for the period from 20, 1958 to 2002. Um, it's using the ERA-40 data set from the European um, uh, weather forecast system. So this is like the mean, and this is what we're seeing in 2016. So if we look at the temperature here, the average temperature here might be 252 Kelvin versus 243 or something. You know, this is like, uh, this is, uh, if this is 243 and 252, it's almost 10 degrees Celsius warmer. Um, and that's all of this year. And we're still climbing here. So we can see, you can see that um, what's happened in previous years. So in 2015, we were warmer over the um, beginning of the year. And then, and then uh, it kind of stabilizes at the usual temperatures in the summer. And then in the fall, it's much warmer. So this is a pattern that we're seeing, very warm um, winters. Summers aren't um, as, as different from the long-term average. So this is 2014, same data, a lot more fluctuation. 2013, and, and this is 2012. So you can see that this is where there was, this is where we had the record minimum of sea ice in the summer. We were well above. And you can go back and you can look at particular years. So even back in 2007, we were getting temperatures in the, in the beginning of the year and at the end of the year in the Northern Hemisphere. So this is in the winter, um, temperature anomalies um, above, above average. So this is not good for the sea ice, obviously. Let me back through here. This is another plot here, which is interesting. And this shows the um, this shows a similar thing in in the data. So this shows the air temperature over the Arctic Ocean. We can get the two meter temperature, and you can see that it's much higher than the average. And if you look at the freezing degree days, you can see that they drop off. So the Arctic has been much much warmer than normal. Of course, it's no surprise that the sea ice is taking a big hit. And uh, if we look at what's happening with the actual sea, uh, movement of the sea ice, the, the drift, what you can see is there, it's very dependent. The, the sea ice export is very dependent on these types of patterns. So the ice is moving very quickly here. Go back a bit and you can see that there's a lot of export here because of the cyclonic patterns that are moving through the Arctic. So the conditions of the, the weather conditions are, here we go. So look at this, this is a low pressure area. We get this rotation here. We get export of, export of the sea ice there. We get the bearing, um, we get the, uh, the, the circulation here and the Beaufort gyre type thing. And so this, it's pulling the ice away from the edge there. So we can go back to here and we can look at the what's happening over 12 months with the sea ice. So you can see that the uh, this is the thickness of the ice. Um, so we're going, this is in 2015, 07, 18. Um, so we're into August 2015 and the ice is going down to its minimum, sort of mid-September. And then the ice is growing back through the winter, but because the winter is so much warmer than normal, you know, five degrees Celsius more, um, the ice formation is less. So the peak was, was uh, much lower than normal. The ice is not as thick, it's not as strong, it wasn't as extensive. And now we're coming into February of this year, um, March, and you can see the export picking up uh, dependent through the Fram Strait, dependent on these cyclones, and there's not a lot of thin ice in the Arctic there. So the question is, the big question is, um, I'm gonna have to end this video and do a part two, and I'll discuss what's happening with this blue ocean event. So please uh, bear with me, thank you.